Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the United Summer Podcast. And that's the last time that I'm going to say that because this is the last episode. This has been so much fun for me getting to do this this summer, making this podcast and putting these episodes out on YouTube and Spotify. I'm so thankful for all of the friends who have been helping make us do this, like Tyler, the producer, who's been behind the cameras, behind the computer each episode, helping put it all together. People like Jacob Upton, Kyle Gokon, all of the students that we've had on the podcast each week making it happen. So thank you and thank you for watching and listening, and we really do pray that these episodes have been and will be an encouragement for you in your soul. I've been telling you guys the past couple of episodes that in the month of August, the theme of the podcast is being on mission. Well, we are recording this podcast right now when we are doing the United Christian Club Masterclass. This is something that I've been doing this summer with about seven to eight guys from United. They are the Christian Club leaders of the United Clubs that we've got on the different campuses, and then some other guys who are thinking and praying about starting clubs or really just want to learn how to be a leader so that way they can make more disciples. And all of this comes from our heart and our passion at the United, that we want to obey the command of Jesus Christ that we're going to study at Back to School Camp when we're leaving this Friday in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, to go therefore and make disciples. And we do that here at United when we see high schoolers gather with us. But really, the main way that we see that happen is through you living out your faith shining the light of Jesus Christ, being the salt of the earth on your campus amongst your friends. And so that's why I love what we are doing, what we're seeing God do at United through these Christian clubs. And so right now, I'm going to sit down with some of the students who are leading these Christian clubs, and I'm going to ask them what they've learned from the class that we've done this summer and what they're hoping to see God do this year on their campus. So first up, We've got Jackson Marin. Jackson, why don't you tell us, first of all, you've been a part of this master class all summer long from the very beginning. Yes. Dude, what has been standing out to you? What have been some of the things that you feel like you've learned from being a part of this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, every single week you've been asking some really important questions, uh, mainly because like what we're doing at these Christian clubs when it comes to like leading and like wanting to see souls get saved. It's it's not about it's less about what you do. It's about more the person that you are. Mm. And you've asked some really great questions. Some of them like like, are you broken? Are you broken over the fact that there are many souls at your school who are in their sin and on a path of destruction or even questions like, hey, are you blameless? Like if you want to be used, you have to be someone who is above reproach and someone who's pursuing holiness. If mm. you want to be someone that God loves to use. But I think one of the main questions that you asked that really stood out to me was the first week it was, are you bothered? Mm. And the, the, what that, what you meant is like, yeah, like, are you bothered by the fact that like there are people at your school who are not giving God the glory that he deserves? Like we walk all around our campuses. I know I walk around at Ocean View High School and I see people who are living in their sin. And I know that God is not glorified by sin. So even kind of questions like that, it's like, man, like, am I really someone who is bothered by the fact that God is not getting glory from like these people's lives like he deserves? So I think that was definitely something that that really helped me change my mindset. So often when when we're trying to see stuff happen on our campuses, we get so caught up in the results and things like that. And while we do want to see souls get saved, ultimately, uh, I know I'm doing this for the glory of God. So that's something that should be the main motivating factor in my heart is I want to see God get glorified. Mm -hmm. And when I look at my school and I, I see all, all the people who are in their sin, man, that should really motivate me. God, I know you're not getting the glory you deserve. God, would you please use me to reach these people with the gospel so that your name would be glorified? Yes. So you led the Christian club at Ocean View High School. Yeah. Shout out to the Seahawks this past school year. Can't spell love without OV. And alongside of Nate Nowatney, yes, who's not here right now because he's at home doing laundry, probably. And uh, you, Lord willing, we're going to be doing it again this school year, praying about all that coming together. What are you hoping to see God do on the campus of Ocean View High School this upcoming year? Yeah, well, there's there's definitely a couple things that I'm praying that God will do at the campus of Ocean View High School. I think one thing is, I mean. Um, we're blessed to have even a group of people from the United who are at 
Ocean View High School. And something that I would love to see uh, is even this kind of group be more united than ever, right? I think anything that we do to have Christian clubs or to go evangelizing to reach the lost, it's all going to be enhanced by how much we are united. I even mm. think about Acts chapter 2, right? We see uh, like the early church, right? It's getting started and we see how these uh, these new believers, they're, they're devoted to fellowship and to the teaching and to the prayers. And, that, and even as they were devoted to those things together, God was faithful to add to their number those who were being saved on a daily basis, mm-hmm. right? So I even think that the, the amount, uh, how much we are united, even on campus, being the church, not just at the United, not just in a church building, but on our campus for everyone to see, man, God is going to add to that number. That's what I want to see happen, even I think that that's a big part of what I want to see happen. Even as we do these clubs that we would see really souls get saved, that we would see people really hear the gospel and not just hear it and then reject it. We know many people reject the gospel. We want to see, and specifically I want to see, I want to see real contrition over sin. I want to see people who are realizing that their sin is not worth living for and giving up everything to follow Christ. That's something that I really want to see this school year. Yeah, well, I know there's a lot of big things that we can pray for at Ocean View High School. I mean, obviously, we want to see God bring revival. We want to see people get saved. But even a specific thing that I know we've been talking about that we want to pray for, be awesome if everybody who's watching or listening to the podcast could join us in praying for this, is we want to see more females rise up in leadership, specifically at Ocean View High School. Yeah, we don't have somewhere in the world doing ministry Sarah Bassluce anymore. So we need more girls to rise up and to lead other girls to Christ at Ocean View High School. Um, you know, I, I can I can talk to everyone about the gospel and I have men like boys and girls at Ocean View, but um, you can only go so far with someone in a conversation, especially when you're counting up the cost. You're talking about uh, sin and things like that. It's like it, it's really hard to kind of get really really far with someone who is of the opposite gender so i even think that's a really practical thing to pray about you can't get personal right you can't you can't be open and honest with someone of the opposite gender about sin that's not appropriate so yeah we can be praying for that hello there hello joseph murray hello shane so you've been a part of this class Mm -hmm. dude what do you feel like has been a big thing that has stood out to you or something that you're going to take with you after this class is done yeah, I remember um, one of the questions you asked at one of the classes was, are you bold? And I remember you thinking about that, like kind of boldness is something I've like thought about so much before already. And it's like, and it's kind of a truth that I've like kind of just come to like know where it's like, oh yeah, like, you know, we should be bold. Like our boldness comes from God, does not come from someone who's naturally bold. Because it's like reality, it's like we were talking about boldness like this, where uh, like boldness to go and share the gospel with people, that, that, that kind of boldness only comes from God. Mm. And even think about that, when I'm talking about like, hey, like what what's even going to determine like you being bold or being timid is like, hey, like do you have a fear of God or do you have a fear of man? Mm-hmm. And even think about that, I was like, I mean, I, I don't want to have a fear of man. I want to have a fear of God because like, because I mean, yeah, like the reality is like, hey, like man, like as far as they can do, they can only kill your body. God can kill your body and soul in hell. Yep. And it's like, Hey, like e- even with that, it's like, I, I, it's like, I know in my mind, Hey, I should only fear God. I shouldn't fear man. But at the same time, it's like, at the same time, I can't just know that and be like, okay, I'm just going to fear God. So now I, I have to continue being so to the Lord, ask him to give me boldness and to correct my mind in, in, in the way I'm thinking. Yep. Um, so I feel like, yeah, even thinking about that, I'm just like, Hey, like I, I'm so excited to see what God's going to do, mm. uh, this next year at, uh, PCLC and ha- at my, my last year of high school. And it's like, but at the same time, if I don't ask God to continue to give me a fear of him and to give me boldness, it's like, I'm, I'm not going to end up being very useful to him. Yep. Well, why don't you take us into it for just a minute? So you were leading the Christian club at PCLC this past year, which PCLC is like a homeschool kind of co-op. It's gotten really big here in Huntington Beach over the past couple of years coming out of COVID. What's it like leading a Christian club at PCLC? Yeah, it's very, it's definitely very interesting um, because, well, we actually have no official clubs going on at PCLC. There's no like, you know, you sign up. We we did at one point, but we don't anymore now. Uh, Yeah. So there's no actual sign up club, but, um, but we're, they still allowed us to have our Christian club there, which is, I mean, praise the Lord. It's a huge praise. Yes. Yep. 
uh, and, and and with that we have no you know in, indoor room so we are, we are actually outside with it which definitely makes it uh very very interesting where it's like oh there's a lot of it feels like usually there's more distractions outside um yeah uh, uh, that's how it is we're outside um doing the club during lunch every thursday um amongst everyone else doing their lunch yep and yeah it, it's it's always been almost like kind of partially like a struggle just because it's like oh like people feel like you know they can just like walk up and leave in the middle like um yeah so it's always been very interesting but so with that struggle of every single week feeling like we're almost having to refigure it out what is the reason why you and the crew last year continue to do it i mean i i would imagine that doing something like this christian club which is a good thing but when it becomes such a hard thing each week feeling like it's so difficult having to figure it out how are we going to do this how do we get better why why did you guys keep on doing it week after week yeah well i mean like i mean really like the gospel is the power for god, of god for salvation i mean we we believe i i definitely believe that like when god's word goes out like god's gonna build his church because he mm. has promised that so like even when i mean even when it feels like a struggle to get people to stay even if there's clubs where there's four people i mean like god can even work in those four people yep and we've seen last year specifically people come to united from pclc through the christian club and now they are saying they've been saved mm -hmm. through the gospel ministry that has happened at the school through the gospel ministry that's happened here at the church so basically what you're saying is no matter what the obstacles are no matter what the challenges are the gospel is so good it's worth overcoming every obstacle so that way we can keep on getting it out there. Yes. What are you hoping to see God do, man? This is your last year. This is your last opportunity to leave a legacy, to go for it with the gospel. What are you hoping God's going to do this year? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm super excited because that's what I've been thinking about. I'm like, hey, this is my last year here at this campus. Um, this is my last year probably seeing most of these souls, I mean, maybe ever. Um, and yeah, you really think about that. I was like, I mean, yeah, I definitely want to go all out. I mean, I really, I really want to see like these souls on campus. Cause you know, uh, I mean, so many people at PCLC, it feels like the typical, like, uh, kind of people who are usually there are, you know, people, you know, people who go to church, people who are kind of like church kids, um, who would even say who some may even say they have a time in their life where they have been saved, but their life may not even show it. Um, so I, I think you're just praying that like, that God will, yeah, build church on a campus and that souls who um, would even uh, originally say that they were saved, people who may, ha may have been self-deceived, go from that, from knowing that, that they're actually now living for God, that people who will uh, repent, put their faith in Christ. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, what I'm praying is that, like, God would really uh, change this. Oh, like, you know, you can go to church, read the Bible, and that's what a Christian means. So making it very really clear, like, hey, no, like, those things don't save you. Like those yep. things um, are good works, but that has something to do with your salvation. Yep. All right, Tyler. Well, you've been Hello. a part of this class. I've Why been don't a you part tell of this class. What's been something that stood out to you? Man. So yeah, even kind of like sharing some of similar to what some of the previous guys have said about those questions. Um, I mean, I think a lot of those questions really did stand out to me. Like, are you bold? Are you blameless? Are you broken? Um, are you bothered? But then even like kind of thinking deeper about these questions, um, even kind of what Joey was saying, it really gets, gets you thinking about, well, what is God deserving of? Like these mm -hmm. questions, it's asking like, am I this way? But ultimately the only way I'm going to be that way is because of who God is. It's mm -hmm. like the reason I would be bothered about the sin at Marina high school is because God's deserving of all the glory. The reason I would be blameless is because Jesus has saved me and I live for him now and I can live for him now through the power of his spirit. So even kind of um, thinking about like, man, it's the way that I'm living really a way that God is going to use me mm. for his work at Marina High School and even making sure that I am the kind of person that God wants to use, that I am somebody that's blameless, I'm somebody that's eager to be used, somebody that's teachable. Mm. Um, so I think this class has been super, super awesome because we've talked a lot about, just like Jackson was saying, it's, it's a lot more about who you are than what you do. Mm. Um, but then even when you are even somebody that is the kind of person that God would want to use or becoming somebody like that, well, then how should you go about what you do? Like, mm -hmm. 
teaching at a campus lunch or leading this group of people on campus. So yeah, it's been a super helpful class, even super cool to be able to have some times where we could teach um, and get better at that and learn. Right. So it was super cool. And so you're going into your last year. Mm. Dude, what, I mean, what do you want to see God do at Marina High School this year? What are you thinking about? Man. Senior year is on the horizon. Senior year is on the horizon. And that's a that's a crazy thing to say. It's like I've got 180 days left of going to Marina High School's campus. And it's kind of even like I can preemptively decide how am I going to use this 180 days? Am I going to be comfortable? Am I going to live for myself? Am I just going to like kind of just go with the flow? Like I could be like, you know, a fired up Christian, but I don't need to go that hard. Or am I going to do everything that I can to see the gospel go out on that campus? Because I mean, United, like high school is the evangelism opportunity of a lifetime. You'll never get it. You'll again. never get it again. So even going into my senior year, it's like, this is it. Like, it feels like it really has like flown by, but it's even like, um, I want to continue to serve the Lord. So even like, what do I want to see this year? Um, really what I want to see is I want to see God do a genuine work in people's lives. Mm. Um, I want to see God use me to even disciple the crew that we already have there. Mm. Cause there are a good number of souls that from United, a lot of you guys shout out to the Marina Vikings, Moat life. um, the, camp the team that's going to win back to school camp right? hey now yeah. uh, i'm just gonna throw that out there so yeah i i think uh that's what i really want to see i don't just want to see like fun and just winning camp and stuff like that like i want to really see this group of people at marina's campus become united yes. and like what i want to see through that is i want i want like anybody at school to be able to kind of look at the christian club to look at the christians and to be able to say like that's like weird almost like wow those people are really united like those yep. people are better friends than anyone else those people love one another and the people would be able to like see the church through the christians living together mm -hmm. at school but then even like i want i want to share the gospel with people this school year and the main thing that i'm praying is that god would use me to make disciples um because we do these campus lunches every thursday which are super awesome but even like you don't need to do campus lunches to be used by God to share the gospel at your high school. So I want to see God um, use me to preach the gospel at campus lunch, to just share the gospel in classes and one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I want there to be people that, like, I don't even know right now, but by the end of this school year, there's some of my closest brothers mm. or sisters that all of you guys know here at United because God would have done a work to use me to make a disciple out of them by showing them the life of Christ in the way that I live at school, by using me to share the gospel with them um, in a conversation because yeah the gospel is the power of god to save and where it goes out god is going to be faithful yep. to save and I, I that's such a comforting thing because we've even seen people from this past school year get saved from marina high school yep. multiple people that i can think of yep. that are still going with us today going yep. into this year as christians now so yep. um, god is doing an authentic work on high school campuses and i'm just praying that he's going to continue to do it and that he's going to do even greater things than we've ever seen him do before well, and I think that's such a, it's such a, a helpful thought because, you know, we're doing this episode, last episode of the United Summer Podcast right now, while we're doing this United Christian Club masterclass that we've been doing all summer long, where I've been teaching guys how to think about leading, how to think about doing a club, how to think about preaching and teaching and all these things. Today, we even had the opportunity at this class to hear Jackson preach, Joey preach, Daniel Basilios preach. I mean, it was an exciting day at the master class. But I, I also want to make sure that everybody in United is not thinking wrongly that it's like, oh, Shane preaches at United and that's how we make disciples. These guys preach at their schools and that's how we make disciples. And so I guess I'm just going to kind of like support them by being around and cheering them on and giving them a thumbs up. And no, 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 that that's that's not how the Lord wants us to think the Lord has given every Christian a command to go therefore and make disciples. And that command is for no specific person as in someone needs to be on staff at a church or someone needs to lead a Christian club. If you are a Christian, if you're a part of United, if you go to one of these schools, you can help out support the Christian club by making disciples on your campus. But even if you don't, there are so many high schoolers all around us that need to be discipled at your school. If you go to a school, who are you pursuing? 
Who are you praying for? Who are you inviting to church? Who are you sharing your testimony with? Who are you sharing the good news of the gospel with? If you don't go to one of those schools and you are just a homeschooler literally by yourself most days, there are so many new people that God's bringing to United that need to be brought in and welcomed in and loved. Who are you pursuing to make a disciple? So that's how I want to end this episode, and that's how I want to end this podcast, by encouraging you who's watching this right now, who's listening to this right now, will you pray that this school year God will use you to make a disciple? I don't care where you go. If you're a part of one of these schools that has a club, I don't care if you're homeschooled by yourself. There are high schoolers that desperately need to be saved, and you've got the hidden treasure. You've got the pearl of great value. Will you pray that God would use you to make a disciple? And pray. Pray for what we're doing at United as I'm leading it and preaching every week. Pray for what these guys are having the opportunity to do on their campus each week. Pray that this year we would see more disciples made than we've ever before. And I I am confident. I'm praying this every day. I am confident that this will be the best year of United ever. I, I am so excited. I don't think everybody realizes what God is going to do at this camp as some people are already back to school and they need a good dose of encouragement. Some people are about to go back to school and we're going to get equipped right before we go back that you are living on mission to make disciples. And I believe that God is going to use his word in a more powerful way than we've ever seen to raise up laborers in the harvest and that we're going to get sent into our mission fields this school year to see God do work of saving souls. So United, this is it. Throwing it up one last time. I love you. Thanks for watching and listening to this episode. And I won't see you next week for another one. <music>